In order to model fire protection items, we're going to first start with placing the sprinklers. Now, to place the sprinklers, we're going to have to go up to the Systems tab, and then click on the Sprinkler command, and then we're going to go to the Properties window, and there we can see all the different types of sprinklers which have been loaded. So, first let's go check where the sprinkler family is located in driver C and become familiar with the different types of it. So, while we're at it, I'm going to click on load family and then go to the metric folder because I've decided to work with metric units. Then go to the US folder, then we're going to find and click on fire protection and then open the sprinklers folder. So, as you can see here, we have several different types of sprinklers. We're going to have to check and see what they are and what differences they have with each other. Now, if you take a look at this image, you'll see that I've taken a look at the sprinklers in driver C and divided them into three groups. First of which is, by the way, they extinguish fires. As you can see, we have two different uh, extinguishing systems, which are dry and wet. Now, a dry extinguishing system means that there is no water through the pipes, but once there's a fire, uh, after a little delay, some water will be flowing through those pipes. Now, as for the wet extinguishing system, the water is constantly flowing through the pipes, and as soon as there's a fire detected, the water will come out through the sprinkler to put out that fire. Now, splashing-wise, we'll say that our sprinklers could be upright, or they could be pendant, or, for example, they could be sidewall, and lastly, we have window, which is used to splash to the windows. Actually, if you take a look at this picture, you will understand it better. This one is the pendant sprinkler, which looks like this in reality, and then we have the upright sprinkler, and this one looks like this. And then we have the sidewall sprinkler. And that one looks like this. Now, if you also want to uh, see the one for window, it looks like this. And this one's also facing the side, which in fact uh, splashes the water towards the window. And its purpose is that it prevents the heat from contacting and heating the windows and also protects the area next to it from the heat of the fire. Now let's go back to this image. So that's it about the part with their splashing. And the last group which we have is by their placement. Do you remember how we used to place the terminals? They were also hosted or free. The same thing also goes for the sprinklers. They're either hosted or they are free. Hosted means that the item needs a host so it can uh, be installed on it. And free means that the item can be placed at whatever elevation we want. Now, hosted families themselves, they can have three different types. As you can see, the first one is fully recessed. This one is actually talking about a sprinkler which is fully recessed into the ceiling and we can't see anything of it. Now, the second one, semi-recessed, which means that half of the sprinkler is outside the ceiling and the others inside it. And then we have another, which doesn't have a specific name, we just call it outwardly, which is completely out and visible. Now, if we go check the families, you will understand these categories. So, let's go back to Revit. And as you can see, like I told you, some of them are dry. And the ones which have not been specified, we're going to call them wet. So, that's about the first group. Now, the second group was by their splashing type, right? So, as you can see, we have horizontal sidewall, and then we have the pendant, and one for upright. The same thing goes for wet as well, horizontal sidewall, pendant, and upright. We also have one more, which is window. Alright, now let's check them by the final group, which, if you recall, were fully recessed. And then we have semi-recessed, or the one that's not been specified. As you can see, all three of them are hosted, but this one's not specified. So fully recessed, we talked about it. Semi-recessed is half out. And this one, which is hosted alone, it's completely out the ceiling. So depending on our design and the requirements of our project, we can select any of these different families, load and place them in the project. 
For example, this family right here, this one's dry upright. But as you can see, this one isn't hosted. So we can place it at whatever elevation we want. Or for example, this one horizontal sidewall, which is also not hosted. And then we have this one pendant and then this upright alone, which is for a wet sprinkler. And actually for this project, I'm going to need a dry sprinkler. I also want it to be pendant. So I'm going to find this dry pendant hosted. Or I can select another pendant fully recessed hosted or this pendant semi recessed hosted. Actually, I'm going to load all three of them to show you the difference between fully recessed and semi recessed. Otherwise, we already know that for this project, we need dry pendant sprinklers. But for now, we're going to need these three. Now, if you recall, we said that some families are already loaded here. So let's see what we have. It is pendant hosted. So that means this already exists. So we're not going to load it again. Or for example, I can select and open it. And if I get a message, see what that message says. But for now, I'm going to select these two. I'm going to hold the control key so I can select them together and then click open. Now we're going to wait for these families to load. Now, if I take a look at the properties window, I can find the fully recessed one. And then I have this outwardly type, which has nothing in front of it. And we also have semi recessed for dry pendant. Now, each of these different kinds of sprinklers have different types of their own. So it's kind of like there are different types which have different names as well. So what are they different about? First, we have this 15 millimeter, which is referring to the diameter of the nozzle of the sprinkler. We also saw in the plan that we needed a one to one half transition. So it means the pipe is one and the sprinkler is one half or 15 millimeters. The size is followed by dry and pendant. There's also a second type which says on drop. To show you this one, let's go take a look at this picture. There it is. When the circumstances push us to use a flexible pipe to connect it to the sprinkler, in that case, we can go use the sprinkler type, which was on drop. This on drop is just an indication that the sprinkler has been connected by a flexible pipe. Now we have one more type, which says with guard. So let's go see what a guard is. So as you can see, we can add a protector like this to our sprinkler. We call that a guard in Revit. And that helps us to distinguish and differentiate our sprinklers in the project. So that was another type with guard. And this one is undrop with guard and this one is with guard alone. So now we know the differences between these three different types. This pendant one is normal and this is a pendant with a flexible pipe. And this is a pendant with a flexible pipe and a guard. And this one's a pendant with guard. These four different types are also included for all the other types of sprinklers. So first we need to make sure what type of a sprinkler our project requires and use that. Remember that these four different subs we have for each sprinkler type, they have no differences appearance wise. So why are we using them? It's because they help us distinguish the sprinklers when we are quantity surveying and help us deliver a better estimate on the items and sprinklers in the project. 